welcome back. Latest episode of the Master None Podcast. Uh, we're back again with our weekly review of the Super Rugby Arturoa, week six. Um, and possibly, I don't know, we keep seeing this every week, but these games just keep being like amazing. Uh, like sometime we're going to have to have like a real snooze fest for one of these games, but it hasn't happened yet. But it's I'm not here. fair because we're going to have to go back to the sports ground at some point. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be windy and it's going to be cold. And yeah. like, we know they can play good rugby, but the, like, not to that standard. All, all the stuff has to align, like, all the various variables have to align. Whereas, like, yeah. it just seems like in New Zealand, they're like, let's just play good rugby and do our thing and make the rest of the world jealous that we, they can witness it firsthand as well. Playing good rugby, how obnoxious. I feel very pampered, you know. I'm getting very used to like staying in bed all morning on Saturday watching rugby on my laptop. Like, I, yeah, I, I can go back. <laughs> yeah, I know it is. It's great. Uh, yeah, two two great games again this week. We obviously Saturday morning Hurricanes versus Blues, which was just amazing as a game. It was so back and forth. I think we said on our WhatsApp we're like, I don't know if it's just if it's bad defense or just great attack because like neither team could stop each other at any stage. It seemed uh, this obviously has turned out to be the Lamappy kind of show as we always say uh, with an absolutely cracking first try no one no one goes around Bowden and beats him for pace that just doesn't happen in uh, Dane Coles rugby. like three weeks ago maybe Bowden <laughs> <laughs> yeah like I think genuinely I genuinely think that uh, we pulled a number we <laughs> we yeah pulled absolute, Hurricanes pulled an absolute number on the Blues there with that one they were like yeah you can have Bowden we got Jordy it's fine <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the Japanese team were like, eh, we might just hold back. And we'll I thought we were getting the Barrett to pay for the Hurricanes. No, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. We signed it. That's what we signed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, heard, I heard there's a few Scottish scrum half that plan to retire. We might just get them in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Similar pace. Similar pace. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that first try as well, I think we have to mention uh, Aratory Black's attempt of a tackle. And don't get me wrong. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. It's not fun seeing you know that animal of a man running towards you. And I would have done nothing better. But, you know, try and go low, maybe. I don't know. He just yeah. kind of, he tried to hug him up top. And it was never going to end well. Wesley, he, tried to, he tried to, he tried to, he tried to overpower him. And like, that's a bad idea anyway, against someone like Lamappi. But they know Lamappi had what, like 30, <laughs> 40 yards of pace built. <laughs> like, it's, you can't stop a steam train. Like, I, think, <laughs> I think, I think, I think Otero Black is uh, bitching out of the tackle. He's doing what? Like I used to do, I used to be shit scared of tackling, and he's doing what I used to do, which is almost kind of force the like their momentum to take you. Uh, <laughs> you just kind of get on on the end of it. Like Wesley, there's a great photo of you trying it in uh, China against <laughs> against. Uh, oh big, wow! Shots big, fired. Shots fired. I got him down. I made the tackle. That's the difference. <laughs> yeah, but well, just, the ugliest Artory, tackle you've ever seen. But I got Artory it. Black technically made the that, tackle, but it didn't think, do anything. I think he just wasn't aware of where he was standing. I think he thought he was standing about five yards in field and was trying his hardest to just bring him down in some way. Either that, or he was trying to force the held up because he knew he wasn't going to be able to knock him back. Because, like that you was... said, now Mappy is running for forty yards, full pace, non interrupted either. Like there was no even like he didn't even have the break stride. It was just pure. 40 meter dash, <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. And he well, just minced him. But some even, bug got in his way at some point. Yeah, yeah. For some the try. Barrett bug, I don't know, he just kind of uh, squashed like, him. For yeah. the try, the pass, there was a big looping skip pass to him. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, just three minutes in, play it through the hands or whatever. And then he just went, step and go. And he <laughs> <you're on." laughs> just watched him. I don't think Bowden did anything. He didn't like do anything wrong he just got done no he was just like, beating on the outside yeah, for well, he planted his feet you can see he kind of plants his feet when a mappy lines him up and the mappy steps him and then leaves him in the dust like oh, yeah. should've, he should have stayed on his t- tips of his toes yeah, yeah. But he just got skin on the outside like which is again not that uh, not often you see that he then, he then tried to actually make a tackle on the mappy later on in the game yes uh, with a very similar serve stats I was <sighs> absolutely bosh yeah, I think the Blues need to work on the less less of these kicking games, maybe some tackling drills for the boys. But uh, I was, this I was looking at it like uh, I was looking at the stats for Lomapi just from the game because coming out of it, like it wasn't those two moments. It was the entire game. He looked so dangerous. Even we were talking and it was like sixty minutes in. We we're like, oh, maybe Canes are tiring a little bit. And then it came to seventy-five and he was doing it again. But I'm reading here, it's like he uh, he made fifteen runs and gained one hundred and thirty-three meters. He broke five tackles and made three line breaks. Like those are. Their NFL running back stats, like that's. I'm surprised know, it's only five tackles broken. If I'm being honest, yeah, but that's because he's le- like he's 
five broken tackles is five people that managed to get close enough to make contact yeah. with him. He's got 500 people lining up behind him, lying on the ground, missed tackles, like. Yeah, it was incredible. But again, the game, the game just kept going. Like, like within a couple of minutes, Bowden Barrett scores his own pretty much, you know, amazing try. He show and goes TJ Paranara, and he just gone again. That's you. You realize how quick like, Mappy is when you see Bowden in full flight. It's incredible. Like Jordy couldn't come across and stop him. He scores his own try, uh, and then we're kind of evened up again. Like it was a cracking start to the game. Yeah, it was good, and it was good to get the Canes fans on Bowden's back straight away. With like, yeah. scoring, like they were booing him anyway, and then he scored the try, and they really got on him. And it's like it makes you so happy to see like rugby played in front of crowds because I've been watching the soccer and even the Australian uh, version of Super Rugby AU, and it's like without the crowds, you get used to it, but it's not the same. And I think the atmosphere can't be replaced. Like you, there's an intensity which comes with atmosphere, and watching them play in front of crowds, even though they are. Their crowds are falling numbers-wise. They're not full like they were the first weekend at all. But it's just so good to see that because the crowd were getting on Bowden's back and giving them a bit of abuse. And it was like, that's what you like to see because it, you think that try from Bowden Barrett was almost like a, I'll show them for booing me, will I? And they yeah. went show and go and went for it. Like. Yeah, even the commentators, I think the commentators were like, oh, that's one way to silence the booing. And the booing just got 10 <laughs> times worse yeah. from that moment yeah. on. Like, <laughs> if, yeah, if someone did that to me, I'd be like, I'm going to boo harder. <laughs> I'm not going to be like, all right, fair enough. But uh, just as you mentioned there in the crowd, Sam, what do these people want? Like, you're getting the best rugby in the world and you're not showing up to watch it? Yeah, but this has been a problem with Super Rugby across the board from day one. Uh, like, they never had full crowds consistently. They have big games every once in a while, but people don't buy into it as much. Like, you know, the Mitre 10 is so big over there. People are more involved with that. And that's one of the problems which comes from manufacturing these teams. Like... In, you know, we have our provinces in Ireland that have been provincial teams for years, but when Super Rugby rocked up, whenever it was, or mid-90s, 95, yeah, yeah, 94, 95? Uh, 96. 96, yeah, when that happened, they started just kind of hand-picking teams, uh, but people stick with their Mitre 10 teams, with their local teams and stuff, and I think that's one of the problems. Another problem is probably just down to affordability, like, you know, in some of the places where games are on, there might not be huge, massive populations. It's not like going to a Dublin or a London. There's small cities like in, in New Zealand. And some of them just might not have like that big a population that want to go to a game like 30,000 people every week. You know, we have a lucky at the sports ground where we can look like we're sold out of five or 6,000 people. But if we had a 15, 20,000 seater stadium, we wouldn't sell out and yeah. it would look empty. And that's the problem, you know? That's worth, I mean, that's the, one of the points that's worth mentioning is that like, they are playing these matches in like huge stadiums. international stadiums. So like there was, I think they said there was uh, 10,000 people at the uh, Highlanders game, but yeah. it, like it didn't look like that because the, all you kind of see, your eyes are drawn to the empty space yeah. in the crowd. Well, I just noticed that because uh, Bowden is kicking a conversion later in the game and behind the post, it's just this empty section, completely empty. There's not a soul. Did I Bowden just, get that looks, conversion? No, he missed. He missed. No, he missed. But Jordy in uh, seventy six. Okay, let's, let's just let we'll get to it. But let's just pump the brakes on the Jordy versus Bowden stuff for the time being. We'll you can't we'll pump those brakes. I'm we'll sorry. Get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Uh, Blue score tried again. Pump, they tried to pump La Mappy's brakes and it just didn't. Do that. Uh, shout out to our Terry Black. Uh, <laughs> 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 hope you're recovering. Our Terry speed bump. Yeah, he's, oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Blue score again though. Uh, quickly off a of mall. Uh, which I thought that no, here they go. Like this is this is the Blues that you know. Again, we question how how like mentally strong they are. I thought that's what you know. Early setback, go and score two tries at the bounce. Then the Hurricanes come back, and the Hurricanes score a try. And I, I keep this keeps happening. And I want to know what you guys think. Dean Coles, bit of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> he has no business been that nimble. Like it's ridiculous. No, but not even that. Like they score a try, and he's pushing lads, and he's rubbing boys in the head. And it's just like we get it, Dean Coles. You score a try. Stop being a dick. I, I think that's personally. New, but what do you guys think? I think that's a bit of a New Zealandy kind of thing. I think that they do just like they they slag each other quite like Irish people do. Like uh, I think they all know each other so well from the international scene that I don't really think it's dickish. I think it's like you see Bundy doing it uh, all the time with like players that he knows from the past. You know, you kind of get under their skin and get in their head, and then at the end of the game, they're best friends. Like I think that's just a normal kind of New Zealander sort of thing. And Irish people do it as well quite well like you know you get under your opposition number skin and then after the game you're best friends with them again like 
yeah, what do you think, Westy? What's your opinion on Dane Cole's? Uh, I, I'm enjoying it. I mean, because I love anybody that brings a bit of personality into the game, and I think he definitely does that. Like, yeah, it's entertaining. He knows he has no business scoring these tries, so he, he just soaks it up, you know? Yeah, just on my on my dick list, he's he's questionable at the moment. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. You got to be a bit of a dick to be successful, man. Yeah, that's why you're so unsuccessful. Oh, I just that's a, that's like a backhanded comment, Westy, because I'm saying you're a nice guy. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, exactly. Keep it in your toes. I get back <laughs> to the box. Half time, fifteen fifteen. You know, I think though. I think we we said at the time. I feel like the Hurricanes were the better team in that first half. They had way more opportunities, but just couldn't kind of finish them off. Uh, as a Canes squad player, Sam, that must have been frustrating. It was. I was, I was, <laughs> messing, I was messing the two of you on a, I was messing the two of you during the game. It was actually really frustrating. Not so much that Canes weren't finishing their chances. Uh, they they were very dominant and running so hard. Like uh, Karifi was running ridiculously hard, and Savi as well. Like they they kind of their yards after contact. I tweeted about it was just it, sensational. I'd love to see the stats for that. Like how many yards they're getting after contact because. They're, make, they're getting the first tackler, second tackler, third tackler, and still getting three or four yards. And they're breaking that game line, just not scoring. But what was more frustrating, really, watching it was, like, Blues essentially had four attacks, four tries. Like, there was the, the mall tries were coming in, and it was just like, Canes weren't defending badly. Like, the, the one for Bowden thing, that was a great show and go, and it absolutely sold it to TJ Parnar. Like, it was frustrating to watch, but you can't really do much about a moment of brilliance like that. But the other ones were all stoppable, and they were defending really well and then two three more tries coming in like that just that's you're going to get punished if you keep that up like you know it was great but Canes definitely should have I think won by more they should have kept them out of those four tries maybe two shouldn't have gone in they should have defended a bit better for those because the rest of the defensive game was fine it was just frustrating to watch a team be quite dominant and concede and be behind for portions of the game when they should have been ahead throughout this I want to throw a stat at you. Oh, yeah. Westy. There oh. were millions. Uh, uh, this is a little statistic. There were millions of rolling mall tries in Super Rugby this weekend. Millions. <laughs> and that's they, a fact. They were everywhere. I have never yeah. seen so many no, rolling malls in Southern Hemisphere rolling in my tries. life. Rolling mall tries were this week's charge down. They were oh, in well, fashion yeah. this week. No, but legitimately, yeah. what was your I think in that game, like four out of the six or... Yeah, five the, out of the eight, whatever yeah. it was. Hurricane's first try was oh, sorry, Hurricane's second try was rolling mall. Yeah, Dan Cole's Papa try was a rolling mall. Yeah, Dan Cole's no, he didn't score. Uh, yeah, that one was blues as well. Yeah, true. Uh, and the same just, in the other game as well. Like, there, I mean, it's I've never seen it. I don't know how to react to it in Southern Hemisphere rugby because it's not a thing. Yeah, I don't want I don't want to creep it into Southern Hemisphere rugby. <laughs> it's the only thing that Ireland have. It's the only thing we're good <laughs> yeah. at. I, I think you got it. We're screwed. I want, I want refs to start. Clamping down a bit on this. I don't want those Southern Hemisphere boys getting too good at the old set pieces. Like the, the line outs going to shit was all right for a couple they've, of weeks. They've, they've sort of turned that around as well. I've seen <laughs> there has some, this is really bad for the rest of the world. This is not good. <laughs> it's like they're trying out, see what they're bad at, and then getting good at it while the rest of us can't yeah. leave our house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's tough to practice line outs in your kitchen. You know what I'm saying? That's tough. Um, I see them. I see it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, Hurricanes score right after the halftime break. But then the Blues come back again, equalise and go ahead again, which I'm like, you know, this is unbelievable. The Blues just won't go away in a game where, as we said, for the majority of it, I feel like they were second best. This is where my Saturday morning went uh, pear-shaped. Uh, it was, what, 70, 70, when did they score the try? 76th minute. 76th minute. Uh, <laughs> my housemate downstairs put on the toaster which totally uh, shot the internet or the electricity in the house and everything went black for two minutes. So, and Sam then puts up in the WhatsApp for people listening at home, can't believe they did that. Now jury to win it from the sideline, which I responded with, that's obviously not true. That would be, that would, that would be too exciting and too unrealistic. But of course it was true. But I wanted to ask you guys actually this because you are watching it. So the highlight packages, it never shows a clear grounding for that hurricane strike. Was it? Was it? I, a, was it obvious or was it questionable? I, I think the I think the refs on the pitch went with the wrong question. So you know, they they said it was a try and they, they didn't see a grounding. I, I don't think anybody saw a grounding and said well, this, decision is a try. Yeah, this Any reason I can't question. avoid it. Surely in the highlights you would show the grounding if it was clear and obvious, which they didn't. I don't think it was. Sam, could you see that from the bench? 
uh, from inside the mall, I was the one on the ground <laughs> the the <laughs> here. But uh, no, like like Wes was saying, I think that that's a wrong question. I think that that wasn't the only time this weekend as well. The rest kind of just doubtable as well. It's, it's such a hard thing to do, like seeing a grounding. Like if you're a defensive mall that's going to shit, just make it really hard for anyone to see anything. You, like just fall all over the place. Like that. That's a good tactic because the ref has to ask a specific question. And like Wes yeah. was saying, if they they ask the wrong question, they can shoot themselves in the foot. Like, you know, the try yes or no is the ultimate question. Like, yo, just is it a try or is it not? It is, yeah, it's different, yeah. Then a ref's not backing themselves, you know. I, like, is there any reason why I can't award the try? It's so different because they have to then see it definitely not hitting the ground. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But I, I feel like the referees, they're trying to stay away from TMO nearly as much as possible. Like I feel like if this was in a southern he- or northern hemisphere league, I think we would have seen a lot more TMO decisions. Oh, which you, I'm, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but I feel like they're definitely actively trying to like, you know what, more you know if they can't see more next try, we'll you know we'll, we'll blow the try, which I think is good and bad in certain ways. But I, let's not let that take away from the next massive moment, which was obviously Jordy Barrett slotting a monster of a kick. Uh, he's got two big testicles on him, and I respect him for that. But I have to, his his kicking technique is so much more natural than Bowden's. Bowden's is so. I feel like every time Bowden runs up to the ball, he's going to shank it. I just it just doesn't look natural. Do you think that like Jordy is actually like it's properly athletic looking and it looks like he he looks like he's been kicking since he was you know young. Where Bowden, it looks like I don't know. It just it looks weird, doesn't it? I I think there's a lot more kind of effort put into Bowden's kicks. He's really he's really putting the boot through it and trying to get as much behind it as he can. And he's a great kicker, obviously he is. But I think that like. When Jordy was kicking, you know, the big one from two weeks ago, uh, and then that last one last week as well. Like it's I think that he is he's hitting him far more naturally, but he's just he's a much bigger person. Like he's yeah. got a lot less effort to put into it. Like there's a picture of the two of them sitting beside each, or standing beside each other after the game. He's got about two, two, three inches on him. And yeah. Cody's not small, like he's six one and six two, maybe. Like mm. he's not a small player either by any stretch of imagination. So Jordy is absolutely huge for a back like a fullback. Uh, which is great athletically to have him because he's so solid in the air as well. He took some great ones he out. He did, of the yeah. They, they, I remember in the first half they put a massive up on him, and it was a really tough one to defend. And he came down with it, which you know probably settles his nerves for the rest of the game. But massive. But obviously, Hurricanes hold on, get the win. But the big question now, I think, is you know both teams have won three and lost two. Blues are just slightly ahead in points, but. It's a real question now, which which team is better? I, I, you know, last two weeks I would have clearly said Blues, but they're on a two losing streak now. I know one of them was Crusaders, which is tough, but yeah. um, I will, as a Blues defender, I will have like to note Blues are without Hoskins Tutu and Caleb Clark for that game. Which yeah, is, I was I, I was gonna put up in the group chat before the game start like hashtag not my Blues. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no Clark, that was a tutu. I thought two, I'm out. two massive. You know, game-changing players, which I'm not saying it would have swung the game. I would have not. We also said earlier as well, as you said, Sam, Hurricanes were the better team this game. They could have been a more decisive victory. But I'd like to keep that. That is something you have to put it into consideration. Yeah. If Hoskins and Caleb Clark was there, who have been two of our highlight players from the first five Oh, they've been brilliant. So, that's, what do you think, though? Like, Westy, now, if you were picking one right now, winner takes all. Your life depends on it. I get to shoot you in the face. <laughs> which, you know, I'm not saying I want to. I'm saying... Who am I picking than the team? Yeah, who are you picking? Um, this, that's the question now. It's a viable question. I think I think overall in the competition, I think Blues have been more impressive. I think Canes took two games to get going properly. Um, it was only really after the the bye week that we've kind of seen them come alive. Since Jordy um, came back, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's a fair point. I think since Jordy came back. Um yeah, I think I think at the minute I think Blues have been the better team throughout this tournament. Now, I'm not saying they will become the end of the tournament, but I think at this point, you know, those two games were relatively close. Um, and in their other games, I think, yeah, I think Blues are... I think if we're looking at somebody to beat Crusaders, it's, it's Blues is still our best chance. Yeah, Sam, let's face it, I mean, that's the problem here now. Sorry, is that like, Crusaders can't be caught now. So, well, yeah, they can, that was, they won't be. That was, the, that was the, yeah, we were like, oh, great game, but sort of ruined the rest of the competition. <laughs> But Sam, obviously, I think we know which one you're going to pick. Yeah, well, no, uh, I'm just from what Wes was saying. I think that the you know Blues have their two losses now, uh, where Canes had their two losses at the start. The Crusaders game, 
went relatively similar for both teams. Both teams, like for Blues and Canes, both were close games and the Crusaders just kind of hit the gas for the last 10 minutes and went away with it. Uh, but I think, personally, I think the Canes have the momentum swing now. Uh, they're they're coming into a good run of form. Like, this, two two losses on the bounce like this for Blues, like, you don't know how that's going to affect them setback. Now, Artero Black is out. Bowden, is he going to shift into out half or is he going to stay at full back where he's been, like, not unimpressive, but not great either. Westy, like, is it time, back. Westy? Is he's it coming time? in. My is boy, my Lord and Savior. Old Blue Eyes himself. <laughs> yeah, well, eyes. If, you're, if you're going to stick him back in, right, you, what you do is you pay that pub team hooker to come and hit him late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Surprise <laughs> but, uh, call up for a uh, random player. Well, I, I think that that's a big question for them now. The Artero Black injury didn't look great. Uh, you hope that he's okay. It looked, it looked serious enough. But like, yeah, Bodie came in, then he played it out half. Like his try came from essentially he was the... the the first receiver, like he was playing the out half channel for his try. Is that where he's going to be a bit more effective? Is he going to want to move to that position more often if that's where he has eyes? Because he said even in his interview after the game, that's where he feels most comfortable. Uh, and if you're paying big money for him, like Artero Black's playing well, but you know it might be a case where Bodie has a chance now to step up at out half. And if that works out for them, great. Uh, Blues will definitely be an impressive team with him playing at out half. But it could be you know, make a break for him and is actually playing out half position. He's getting his chance now, whereas like, you know, Artero Black was rightfully keeping him out of the position the last few weeks. So I think that Canes have the momentum at the moment. It's kind of hard to tell because they both have the two losses. They just have them at different periods. I'd prefer to get my two losses out of the way and then go into a, like a winning streak and players like Save are coming back and like Lomapu playing the way he did. You know, that's just going to like, they're just going to build in confidence from that and you hope they continue that on. Because like Blues have to now pick themselves up and see how they're going to react to the two losses in a row. Yeah, personally, I, I would still pick the Blues just because, um, like I think Wesley said, they've been a bit more impressive in their actual wins. I think the Hurricanes, I know the first the first win they held on a bit because it was, you know, yellow, red cards. The second game as well, it hung on a little bit. They were very impressive at the weekend there, I have to say. So they could be on more of a, you know, a rise compared to the Blues. But again, yeah. I, I think they definitely have the firepower to take on, uh, you know, a Crusaders again. Everton has to click, obviously, and it has to be a perfect game. But uh, I still would slightly give the edge to the Blues. But like realistically, how many how many minutes do we think? Sorry, back to the Dan Carr stuff. How many realistically minutes do we think he has in him at that level? He's not coming first. He's not coming straight back in for an eighty-minute game. Not no, a chance. No like, chance. You, do you start you, him and could bring him off after 50, 60 minutes, or do you bring him on for the last? 30 minutes? Wasn't I he meant to be on the bench? The game game? He was meant to be on the bench. Be yeah, he had a niggle with his um, Achilles, I believe, or his uh, ankle, maybe, or something along the lines of that, which was really disappointing. But if Black's out now, we have to surely see him. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. I want hopefully, let me just see. I think, is that the Saturday game? I think no, Sam was right. Not. I think it's, it's not going to be more than 20. I'd love, like, I'd love to see it happen in, in two games or so. But like, I think, realistically, last 20 minutes, last 15 minutes. That, that's, yeah, all, that's, that's all he's going to be on for. It. But, yeah. I mean, he has the potential well, to have an amazing 20 minutes. One player yeah. to have to close out a game. Like, you're, you're 10, 15 points up, you know, holding on to a lead. You bring in a player like that who can just put the ball on a feckin' sixpence anywhere on the pitch. If he can still kick, like, we don't know anything. Like, Well, this is the thing. We're, you know, we're, 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 we're thinking of Dan Carr from the Lions test in 2005. When was yeah, it 2005? Like, so, different. Well, yeah. Have you seen him? He has. Have you seen him? He hasn't aged a day. So I'm. I know he hasn't he has, aged has, a day. Look, wise Westy, but that's not how the human body works. Yeah. Unfortunately, the body, the body <laughs> is <laughs> yeah. the mind is strong, but the body is weak. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's budgy. Uh, we'll move on to the the second game, which was Sunday. And again, just a bit of backdrop to our WhatsApp conversations here. <laughs> I watched the highlights of this game. I think around nine o'clock Sunday morning uh, when I woke <laughs> up in bed. Uh, immediately text into the group because I know Sam likes to watch them later so I was like Sam have you watched this game he's like no I won't be able to watch it till like it was like 1 o'clock wasn't it was, it? Like yeah, it was, o'clock. I got up for the 10 o'clock showing like as I do every Sunday and then for some feckin' reason uh, what was on instead of it like darts was on so they moved it back to 12 o'clock so I was like no sorry I can't get to watch till 12 so I'll talk so, to you about it after that it was nearly 2 o'clock before I got to you know laugh my ass off on the WhatsApp oh group God. Or like even tweet. I didn't even tweet about it because I was like, Sam's gonna probably see it. But as everyone who knows who watched this game, the Chiefs started off 
amazingly. The Chiefs are 24 nil up at one stage in this first half. No, sorry. It was first, yeah, first half. They were 24 nil yeah. up at one stage. Even at half time, 24 7 up. Playing well, like looking good. Fin- like finally, here it is, you know, against the Highlanders, which is probably the second weakest team, but still, like a, you know, decent Highlanders team. And then, not only that, sorry, start the second half with a try. <laughs> not even, it wasn't even a full half collapse. It was start the second half, Chiefs score a try. I'm like, this is it. I can't believe it. They're finally going to get a win, and my hashtag Gatland out will stop trending worldwide for the first time since we started it. But no, this is a, a collapse of all collapses. I just, Westy, what did you think when you did you did you watch it full or just the highlights? I, I actually I didn't see the game, yeah. and I'm heartbroken because I actually so I was on I had to get an early bus on Sunday morning, and you guys were talking about watching it. I knew I was going to miss it, so I actually checked the score, and I I couldn't believe it. Like I actually couldn't believe. What Same happened. here. It was um, almost I like for our podcast and the jokes we make. It was almost perfect. <laughs> it was it was brilliant. This is what I want to ask. I, I want to ask Sam, who watched the full game, what happened? <laughs> yeah, How? It's, like, it's actually hilarious. Like I was talking to Smurf about this uh, the other day, and like Chiefs were fucking excellent like really fucking good and i was like okay okay and it wasn't even like gallon ball it was like super rugby art to row it's like they went okay fuck it we'll play like everyone else and we'll do this having a bit of crack thing and they were fucking they were playing so well it was like free flowing rugby and stuff and they were up and then they were capitulating and the tries were coming in and it was like ah they can't be giving up that oh, ah no way and then even fucking highlanders tried to help them along and not capitalize. They, like Highlanders could have like drawn the game level with 10 minutes to go, but they made so many fucking mistakes and didn't punish the Chiefs. The Chiefs like really fucking tried to fuck this up. Like it was so bad. Like it was, uh, it was, it was hard to watch. I was like texting you lads. I was like, they're not, nah. I know like, nah, they're not like they, they'll win this one. They, it'll finish up like 30, what is it? 31 to, it'll finish up like 31 to 25 and people will be like, Oh, those Chiefs are a bit sketch, and then yeah. they absolutely gave up at the end. Like it was one of the things I did. I did see kind of. I did kind of make note of in the highlights was that anything <laughs> kind of anything great that happened from a Highlander perspective seemed to be Aaron Smith central. Yeah. I yeah, think oh. I, I think he got a bit of a, a bit of a spanking off DJ Paranara last weekend, and I think he kind of came out with a point to prove. He uh, was for sure in the second half. Anyway, I don't know about the first half. Oh, he was absolutely brilliant. He was. He was really running the show but he was running like uh you know we talked about Cooney in the past kind of playing like a French scrum half like he was he wasn't really in the scrum half position at all he was making breaks like a good out out half or first center he was excellent he was, he was bringing players into it so well it was he dominated the game like uh but then like Mackenzie had a disallowed try as well so they could have gone even further ahead and like the TMO was wrong in this case. Yeah, I've seen they come out and said that that was the, the wrong decision. They've come out and said that they weren't actually supposed to be allowed to look at it because of the amount of phases back it was. And Gatlin's after coming out and being like, yeah, I'm not going to give out about it because there was an infringement, you know, but we just need consistency. If they're going to look at stuff that far back, they have to look at stuff that far back in every game. But I think, yeah. you know, if this was two, three games ago and they weren't on a six-game losing streak, I think Gatlin would have been a lot more vocal about it. Uh, I think at the at the moment he's really got no like high horse to be on, so he was just kind of being calm and just being like, "I'm not going to blame anyone else for this losing streak. I'm just going to let leave, like it's our fault. We can't blame a bad TMO decision. You know, it's six games now. It's not like a one off thing. Uh, yeah. Which, in, in fairness, like we we don't think of that with Gatland. We think of Gatland being a prick, like and calling out everyone and telling everyone how much of an asshole they were. So. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't like that though. Like, and I, I think I said it to you guys before about like World Rugby coming out and saying, "Oh, that decision was wrong." And the rest saying that, like, you made the decision. It doesn't matter now if, if it was wrong or not. Like, let people argue about the media. Stop coming out and saying, "Oh, yeah, we should." You know, you're just fueling fire for no reason. Think, no one, no one benefits from that. Do it yeah, internally think, with the refs. Have a meeting with the refs. Yeah. Don't like why announce it like that. I think it's just with the the age of social media, it's just created accountability too much. Whereas if they don't get the upper hand and come out and say oh yeah we acknowledge that that was a mistake and that won't happen again then fucking the twitter sphere is just going to come out and just abuse people and like you get the upper hand and you just say it's done and it's over and gatlin's made a statement and saying that they're not going to give out about 
It stops fucking assholes with eggs as their Twitter handle going 90 about it all week and blaming, like, come the end of the season, it's a meaningless thing. Like, Chiefs are never going to win anything. But people will still throw that back in everyone's face. Yeah. You see it in soccer so much. There might be, like, one thing happened in a game two years ago that still brought up as an argument for everything. It's all these anonymous little Twitter trolls doing it. So I think that that's why they do it now, is they kind of try and get the upper hand and acknowledge things to get it done with and swept away, like, you know. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, Westy. Like, you know, it doesn't benefit the Highlanders. You know, they've already won the game. It doesn't benefit the Chiefs. They're, if anything, more pissed off now about the, you know, the loss. But I can see it then what you're saying, Sam, as well. It is kind of, yeah, look, we, we, and I, you know, refs are human. They're going to make mistakes. And at least they're not dodging that. But lads, I think, you know, as we said before, and we've, all, we've said it with tongue-in-cheek and jokingly about Gatlin and stuff like that, I think the question now has to be asked, how bad is this for Warren Gatlin? Like, how, how much worse does this have to get before his job security is actually genuinely on the line? I think this is a kind of moment where his ridiculous contract is going to probably come in handy for him. Because, like, you do have to remember that before COVID, they, I think, I think their record was four and two. Or something like that, or you know, they 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 had they were winning. You know, they had won a few games. And I think I think they had one or two big wins. Even I think they might have beat the Crusaders at one point. Um, so it, you have to give him credit for those wins. Those wins still matter in terms of his career, not in terms of the Super Rugby Arthur O League. Um, but yeah, you know, a couple of months away now with the Lions, you know, could take the heat off him. Um, but again, I said it before, like it's obviously going to take a year or two for a system to come into play. So like that third year back could now just be ridiculous. Like I don't understand it to be perfectly honest. Like there, there are other people who can coach the Lions. I, I don't know how Chiefs agreed to this ridiculous setup. And I don't know. I think, yeah, okay. It gives Gatlin an out now, but this could make everything worse. Yeah, see, I think, I think what it does really is, like, because I, I don't think he's under pressure at all, like, realistically, I think that this Super Rugby Arthur O thing, it's, it's turning into an unbelievable spec spectacle for all of us to watch rugby. But I don't think any of them envisaged it actually being that important because it's a five-team internal league. I think the fact that it's the only thing on, it's getting a lot of praise and stuff, and because the shit show that is their actual league is all over the place and no one knows what's going to happen with it. So I don't think that this is overly important in terms of like his career uh Wes was saying like he's you know it's going to take a year or two to come like to come into it and to get his systems in place but I also don't think like from looking at it with the Lions thing like the Lions thing was probably agreed before the Chiefs thing was agreed oh, uh, yeah. or de it definitely was sorry but uh I, I think that you know the Chiefs decision I think was more probably pressure from New Zealand trying to get him back into the system with an eyes on eventually co coaching the national team in some regard. Uh, so, you know, him just being in the system works for them. You know, he might end up becoming in this year off, there might be a change to the entire structure and he might become like, you know, chief's director of rugby over a coach or, you know, chief's coach under a director of rugby. Like that could all happen in the next year. They don't know where the league is going to be at next year. There's talk I read earlier that they're still pushing for, you know, an Anzac Australia, New Zealand kind of coalition with South Africa completely out the way. And trying to yeah. offload, like, you know, trying to pull in one, but offload Japan and Argentina as well. So, until that's decided, he's very, very secure in his job because, you know, there's no job there really. Like, he's he's doing the Super Rugby Arthur O thing because it was a great workaround that they could introduce because their country was so much more competent than everyone else in terms of dealing with COVID. But if their country was like any other country in the world and hadn't been that competent, there would be literally no league right now. And his career would have been judged on how well he was doing in the actual league that he had been planning for from his preseason onwards. And just checked, they actually did beat the Crusaders 25-15. Sorry, Sam, go on. Yeah. So, like, that's, you know, that's what he had planned for. He had tried to start introducing the system with a long-term plan and it has been thrown this complete curveball and it's worked for some coaches. It's not worked for him. But I don't think he can be really, really held that accountable for it. You know, it's, it's such a fucking... Yeah, I know, so, what you, right. I, know what, I know what you mean. It just, it's, at the moment, it's literally the worst case scenario for everyone involved. It's bad for him because it's ruining his, you know, not ruining, but it's definitely putting a, a dampener on his legacy as a coach. You know what I mean? Because he's been brilliant with Wales. His Lions record is, you know, impeccable nearly. Do you know what I mean? He's what? He's won one, lost one, drawn one? Yeah. Yeah, I think he has, which for a Lions coach is very impressive. Um, I just want to clarify, we're not saying he's a bad coach by any means, but it's just, you know, the Chiefs 
are obviously not betting from this at all because they're zero and uh, zero and five with a yeah. 20, 20, negative 27 point differential between you know other games. It doesn't like that game was that could have been the game to be like, all right, look at we you know we 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 beat these boys pretty well. Let's you know try and progress from here now. That was as a team one of the worst losses you could have from being so far up. That's going to be very tough to recover from mentally. You know, for yeah. uh, next week, do you know what I mean? Or, or, or I don't think they're playing next week, are they? No, they are. They're playing the Blues, so that's going to be zero and six. Well, I just, <laughs> you know I mean? don't think that this this collapse can fall on Gatland. I think like the, the team just fell apart. M- mistakes are being made individually. I think that they're just so fucking devout, devoid of any confidence. Like you know, they were up, they were up by what was it, thirty one seven at one stage. Uh, yeah, yeah. The team was playing well and playing that, and then they just completely fell apart on the pitch and Gatlin's not on the pitch those players are yeah, very yeah but you know sports Sam sports it always comes back to the coach and you know the, and I know it's not fully but it's always there. he's the leader he's the talisman up you know as a, as the leader of the team he has to take some brunt of this yeah, he's, um, he's, 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 he's going to take a bit of brunt but I just don't think that he could take the brunt for that like I think that this this Super Rugby Arter all league is so out of the blue for him out of nowhere that it's so hard to introduce anything. Like if he has a long-term plan that has included the what was supposed to be this Super Rugby season, next season they definitely have a plan in place for what was going to happen. He wasn't going to leave it vacant. He was there was a long-term plan that included that, and this is throwing it all in the works. Like it's a big massive spanner in the works. I think falling apart on the pitch the way they did can't like you can't blame him. For I that. don't know if you're planning long term, don't take the Lions gig. I know that's obviously very not hard not to do with the Lions, but if you know. It's very tough to do that and then feck off for a year. I'm not feck off. He's going to do the lines. But you know what I mean? It's not... But that's what I mean with his long-term planning. Like, he has... He definitely got a plan in place that included... Yeah, but it's not the away. same, though. It's not... You know, it's not going to be the same. I don't... I don't, I don't you know. Don't, you don't know how that's going to be, though. Like, you don't know if he has... Like, if he has a plan in place that includes a good number two that's coming in and doing exactly what he wants, building from there, like, that. that's... That's all definitely planned out already. And this has just thrown that completely because they don't know what their league looks like next year. So that's going to be a whole other thing of plan, like a whole other plan to come up with that. Yeah. What do you think, Westy? I think, like, it's worth mentioning that we mentioned before that, um, like, Chiefs were having a hard time scoring. Like, they're having a hard time scoring tries. And you can, you can look at it all you want. You can say, Jesus, they scored four tries in 50 minutes. But then they went half an hour without putting a single point on top of that. And I think, I think that is a player issue. And I think the funny thing well, that I see in the media is a lot of this is coming down on Sam Kane. And I have to say, I, I agree with a lot of it. Like, I, 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 I don't think he's been impressive since he got back. Um, and now the criticism I'm seeing is whether he's up to the task of being New Zealand captain. And mm. that's a different story, right? It's, it is a completely different story because it's a different setup. But, but for... Uh, uh, a lovely offload for I think it was Bashir's try. Yeah, like he literally like he's warned. He's told uh, at one point he's told if there's one more infringement at the breakdown, someone's going off, and he says yeah and goes and talks to his players. And then he infringes the breakdown and gets sent mm-hmm. off. Like it's, <laughs> you know, I think I think Ballsy. that makes a Ballsy. point that like y- you can blame Gatland if you want. They have systems that aren't working. They obviously changed something this week and like it imploded on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, it's it's definitely it's just a tough time to be a cheese fan. It's a tough time to be, you know, in, in any way involved with cheese. But uh, you know, I'm sure they will turn around. But as I said, they're traveling to play the Blues this week away from home. I don't think it's going to be this weekend personally. But again, we'll see. With the Blues are on a two two game losing streak too. On Saturday though, we have Hurricanes versus Crusaders. I love a good Saturday game because we get to watch it properly. We don't get to you know see this highlights or this, the late game. That's going to be a crack. Hurricanes at home. This is going to be a real test now. How good are the Hurricanes? Let's see it now. Uh, what do we think, Westy? Give us a little prediction there. Um, I think they're going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> nah. How can you say something so controversial? <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a hot take. It's a hot I'm take. about the hot take. Spicy tonight. hot take, that one. <laughs> Spicy, yeah. You think it's going to be another, another dominant win for the Crusaders? Or will they, be, will, will they have to work for this one? Yeah, so it's it's away, isn't it? It's in it's yeah. Christchurch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's Crusaders at home. Oh, I have it here. Hurricanes, hurricanes are away. Hurricanes at home. Okay, apologies. Maybe I got my information. Yes, Crusaders are at home. 
Oh, okay. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. My bad. My God, bad. Steve, get your facts right. You can criticize my prediction and you don't even know where the game is at. I was talking to Jordy and he said we're playing at home next week. Sorry, sorry. Sam should know. He's, he's on the squad. Look, I know what you're saying about like Hurricanes. You know, they weren't a million miles away when they played Crusaders however many months, weeks ago. I'm basking in the glory of this wonderful combination. I think even Crusaders get, they got like two tries in the last 10 minutes and kind of yeah. pulled yeah. away. Um, and look, they have a wave of momentum, but have you, like, can you honestly sit there and say you've seen any way of beating the Crusaders yet? Because I, I haven't. And I've been trying. I wanted them to lose. Some, some, so sort of, uh, some sort of like a stomach bug that just gets the whole team. Short of, uh, short of, inje- short of bringing COVID back to Christchurch. Yeah, right? <laughs> which touch wood, we obviously hope doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, would, I would probably yeah, I'd agree. Sam, as a Hurricane supporter and slash player, what do you think? I think uh, like beating the Crusaders looks like the impossible task at the moment. Uh, much like playing against Leinster this year has looked like the impossible task. But I think Hurricanes are on a really good crest of the wave momentum-wise. Some of the players were just playing out of their skin at the weekend. If they continue that on, you know, what we've seen with Crusaders in every game really has been just like utter dominance in by they haven't broken a sweat. And then when they've needed to, they put the gas on and like pulled away. Uh, I want to see... Hurricanes, I want to see them run hard at it, try and put, you know, a score or two between them, get a little bit of a lead. Like, you know, Karifi, Artie Sevilla, Lomapi running the way he was doing. Like, How good was your man, uh, Umaga Jens? I thought he was... Yeah, he was... Yeah. And he's, he's an absolute specimen. He looks about seven foot tall. Like, he was catching basketball passes and everything. Like, so... It's a great name you, as well. If you really come out, if you really come out the traps and try and actually get a little bit of pressure onto uh, Crusaders and get, you know, more than a score between them, to see how they react because they haven't been tested that way yet. They've been so in control. They've been behind by a couple of points and then they've just gone, nah, here we go. Off, off. Yeah. In the Audi A6 on the motorway, overtaking the little, <laughs> <laughs> the little Toyota Corolla. <laughs> oh, 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 shots fired, Westy. How fired. dare you? I do you speak about Janice that way? <laughs> Janice. <laughs> Westy but, just uh, recently bought a car for context, <laughs> which happens to be a Toyota Corolla. It's a, no, it's an extremely tough ask, but I do think that, you know, at the moment, Kane's playing the way they are, getting the good win o- over Blues, like Barrett playing out of his skin. They all have confidence. It's the best time to be playing against them, I guess, is what I'm saying, really. So I do, I, I'm holding out hope. I think it's an extremely tough ask, but I'm going to hold out hope. Yeah. Actually, I'll a good point it. that you make. It's, it's almost like a microcosm for beating the All Blacks, right? And what kind of what you used to say about beating the All Blacks is you had to be three scores ahead with 10 minutes to go. Yeah. Have a chance. If if you if you can do that against Crusaders, good luck. Um, Simple, just just score three tries <laughs> just and then three, hold out. Just, for just six you know what? It's actually really simple. You just have to score more points more than yeah. the other team. I was <laughs> thinking that when you talk about Gatland, you know, to his number two for that middle year, it's going to be like you know the father Ted big chalk <laughs> win a game. <laughs> big letters. Uh, second game on Sunday is Blues versus Chiefs, and the Blues are at home. If I'm not mistaken, this time. Uh, Blues are at home, uh, and I, I, I think this is an ideal game for the Blues after a two-game losing streak. Uh, really bounce back. Hopefully, again, a pretty good game for Dan Carroll if we do see him. Hopefully, we do. Because Chiefs, I think they're going to be. Because I said, as I said, that was a really tough loss mentally to come back yeah. from. So I think they're not going to be in any any mood to bounce back. But maybe they'll prove me wrong. But Westy, what do you think, Blues Chiefs? Um, I got. I got to stick with. I got to stick with my boys. Yeah. Blues. Um, I think Blues are home. You know, I, I just. I, I. I don't see anything in Chiefs that suggests that they they can hold on to a lead to win a game. Really, like I know I said last week that the her Highlanders weren't clinical enough, and then there they go and steal a win from the death against the Chiefs. Um, yeah. But no, I think look, there's a couple of injuries around the Blues. We'll know a bit more when the squad comes out in a day or two. Um, but I, I mean, I think, I think they've had two tough but close losses over the last few weeks. Um, so I don't see any reason why they can't pick up, dust themselves off, and, and take it to the Chiefs. If we if we were going to, if it was away for the Blues, I I think Chiefs might be able to rattle them. You know, but in Auckland, I don't think so. Sam, yes, it's so hard to look past the Blues for this one. Really, uh, I'm just going to, for devil's advocate reasons, just kind of say the Chiefs have the chance now to, if they can show what they showed 
at the weekend in the first half play as well as they did uh, keep playing maybe attack that kind of we don't know who's going to be a 10 it could be Bowden it could be Dan Carter it's definitely not going to be a terrible black I've, I've seen reports that that neck injury is going to be a couple of weeks but uh, you know, if they can attack that kind of indecisiveness uncertainty in terms of positions like Bowden's been playing and I presume training exclusively as a 15 for the last while uh, you know get a few scores and then just not capitulate it could be a completely different game I don't think that's going to happen. I think it'll be a Blues show. Like Blues, Blues are a very, very good team that'll want to make a statement. You know, two losses in a row is tough for them. But uh, you know, just for the sake of argument, if you want, if the Chiefs can play the way they did in the first half and not the way they did in the second half, it could be a very good game and much tighter than the like you know league table would suggest. But yeah, as a wise man once said, you'll never beat the Chiefs six times in a row. Just will not happen. <laughs> <laughs> the, Chiefs, the Chiefs are currently six six games. Uh, they've lost six because they lost their last one before the COVID lockdown. It's the first time since 1998 that they've lost six in a row. Oh, well, as the wise man once said, in the same competition, you'll never beat them six times in a row. So <laughs> it's all good. Uh, on that note, well, I think we'll leave it there, boys. Thanks as always. Uh, we look forward to next week. Well, hopefully, you never know, we might be reporting on a Chiefs win. Which would be a momentous occasion. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I Actually, want to happen at this stage. In January, hot take for you. In January, oh. Chiefs beat Blues in Auckland, thirty-seven twenty-nine. That seems like a long time ago now, though, Westy. Yeah. That's a long time ago now. <laughs> uh, Cavan won the All Ireland in nineteen fifty-six. <laughs> <laughs> Mayo fifty-one. Yeah. Woo. GA talk. You never know what's going to happen next on the Master Room Podcast. <laughs> Uh, thanks lads as always follow us um, on our social media Twitter at none underscore podcast uh, everything else Instagram, Facebook, YouTube Master None Podcast uh, and yeah thanks lads we'll see you next week see you then. Bye.